<coughs> Check 1212 uh, Dah on? Okay ha, Assalamualaikum Khabar semua uh, Thank you for come here today uh, I uh, need to explain the new SOP ha? New SOP Because I know a lot of the rakyat is confused ha. I, I don't know why they're confused It's actually very easy The new SOP is almost the same as the old SOP and the old SOP was just like the old new SOP ah senang aja uh, so if you have any question please ask question ah iya dia apa dia alcohol ah uh, alcohol uh, categorized by the national security council as non essential ah therefore uh, banned ah tak boleh jual is banned tak boleh cannot cannot lagi pun alcohol is no good for the SOP ha. because when people the drinking drinking then they come out wah suddenly they love love everybody they see their people the friend they want to hug the friend I love you brother oh you are like my brother tak boleh ni patah SOP the SOP is broken tak boleh one meter must keep away ha. any any other question hmm? cigarette rokok ha. uh, rokok is also non essential tapi boleh jual ah, why? because it's essential to the cigarette addict ah, you don't know if you are not a smoker you will understand do you smoke? Ah, you don't smoke where are you from? Ah, please no wonder lah <laughs> you don't know cigarette addict they must get the cigarette if they don't get it will be a problem ah, tak dapat rokok dia suddenly like eh, eh, geram je macam eh, eh, tak boleh we must look after our addicted rakyat ah, we must take care of them ah, lagipun if you have no cigarette ah, then the rakyat what happen to them? Ah, what will happen? they will turn to heroin ah, macam mana? macam mana tu? macam mana tu? Ah. Do you know how difficult it is to shoot up heroin when you are doing Zoom conference? Susah tu. Tengah Zoom, Zoom, you want to... You want to ikat ni. Susah. Cannot. At least dengan rokok, eh, boleh. Rokok, you just you just light, you light under the table. Ah, senang tu. Ah, the, apa? Do I smoke? Eh? It's not about me. It's not about me. I'm not important myself. It's about the rakyat. The rakyat, we must look after them. Ah. So, uh, I think macam ni, uh, kalau apa-apa, there's nothing else. I just nak pergi roku. Roku, rok, roku zen. Pergi my friend restaurant. Not, uh, I take away. Take away from the restaurant because now cannot eat at the restaurant. Good evening, Assalamualaikum ladies and gentlemen on Malaysia. Uh, thank you for joining me everyone out there. Thank you Lucio Yan guys. Uh, it is my absolute honor to be with you once again on this Friday night, the 30th of July, with this uh, episode of What's Going On Malaysia. This is an interactive show, which means what? It means I right now. If you're on Facebook and you're watching on Facebook, please share the Facebook uh, and also um, me if you're not doing so. And I will wonder why are you not doing so? If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe and uh, tell you something. 
We are coming to the end of a week that could go down in history as one of the most monumental moments in Malaysian history. And by monumental, we have been glued devices. We have been glued to our television. Uh, and when I say television, I mean those of us who are over 40, 45, perhaps who are watching television. The rest of us, for the first time in our lives, we were watching the Sidang Parliament, Kampablas. Why were we watching? Because it was better than keeping up with the Kardashians. And I know that is an old reference, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what is the latest reference, Sayang? What is possibly the the reference? We were watching. We were watching whatever it is that you young YouTubers are watching nowadays, <laughs> because the Sidang Parliament was drama. It was drama upon drama. But before I get into that. I just want to say something. Thank you for watching. If you are watching, I, I need you to know that this is an interactive program. We are going to be bringing up your comments on the side, like Abang Yunus, Abang Jasli, Shazli Ali. Good evening, Mr. Harris. Stay safe. And to you as well, Shaz, Shazil Ali. Thank you, Palani Wei from Singapore. What's going on, Singapore? Do you guys have a show like this called What's Going On, Singapore? But you guys in Singapore, your, your, your method of drama is a little bit... crashes and someone dies you are like oh my god crashes it makes the front page news when a car crashes and someone dies in malaysia that's like the first half of a monday morning just like the first the first this the first half you know that is a very average uh, thing to happen in malaysia and i'm not belittling a, a car crashing ladies and gentlemen i'm just i'm trying to make i'm trying to make a joke here but it's Here's the problem. Uh, I try to make jokes, but people are like, yo, bro, your politician's already funnier than you. And what can I do? What can I do? What can I say? James Ken, hello, Malaysia. Pauline Fernandez, good evening and thank you. Uh, Aleppo Arabic Kitchen, uh, Yusuf Ahmad, Salim Kassentos, and Balan Kanan. You see, how, you see how interactive this is? This is the way the show is going to go, ladies and gentlemen. So I need you to share it right now. I need you to like. I need you to subscribe. I need you to do whatever it is that you netizens do when you're a pre watching a show. And I got to say right now how honored I am that so many of you have responded to this show because this is going to be a Militop show. The guest I have on right now, um, I'll tell you right now uh, what has happened. Every time I have a guest on my show, there's been a amount of people who are saying, bro, oh, uh, I hate this person or I like this person or you've been paid to put on this person. I can tell you right now, nobody puts, nobody pays me to have any guest on my show. I, I get a little bit of sponsorship from Dome only because I love Dome. I'm not, I'm not just saying this. Dome has been kind enough to, um, to say, guy, Harith, we love what you're doing with the show. We love the guests you're having. Uh, and uh, I, I responded by saying, I love Dome. I used, I used to go to Dome every time with my late mother and we would have the chicken pie there. So thank you very much, Dome, for giving vouchers. So uh, I give out vouchers on the show to the, to, the, to, the, to the people who have sent in videos and to the best respondents, the best uh, reviews of the show. But you know what? I've been talking too much. I'm going to say one last time, please, love, please, like, just, this is, this is, this show is, might go down in history when we look back on it as probably one of the most uh, informative, uh, if not uh, um, interesting shows, because it is of a subject that all of us are talking about. It is of the subject of what has been happening in the parliament, especially on Thursday. What happened yesterday when, when suddenly, um, you know what, you know what happened yesterday? Uh, parliament began as usual, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Suddenly, uh, the uh, young Dipatuan Agung's uh, statement was read out and then the parliament was stopped for lunchtime and then it was postponed till 3.30 and then from 3.30 it was postponed, postponed till 5.15 and then suddenly there was COVID tests out there and then suddenly it's been postponed to Monday. So automatically everybody asks, what's going on? Oh, constitution, this constitution, that. You know what? I'm not an expert. I am no, I'm not even knowledgeable on most subjects. I don't even know... Uh, what my kids are studying in school. But when I want to learn knowledge, when I want to learn about something, I call in the people who are knowledgeable. I call in the people who are experts. I call in the people who know what they're talking about. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I am most privileged and most honored to have with me a guest who, uh, I have to admit, before 24 hours ago, I had 
I did not know this person. Uh, someone shared and followed uh, forward me a, a YouTube video it says, of his explaining can the government, um, you know, can the parliament uh, re revoke or annul a constitution? And it, it was all gibberish to me. So I managed to, to contact this person and then he immediately responded and we spoke on the phone last night for about 45 minutes to an hour. And I said to myself, I need to have you on my show. I need to hear, I, I need my, my, my followers, I need you guys to hear what this guy has to say. Now, once again, let me preempt this by saying, this is all opinion. Usually people come on my show with talking opinions, but this guy knows the law. So uh, be without any further ado, I'm going to introduce him. I don't actually know how to introduce him. Uh, I, I, I know him um, as a lawyer and a writer, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him tell us a little bit about himself before we jump into what's going on in Malaysia. Guys, keep commenting. Keep commenting right now. I want you to comment. I want you to ask questions. I want you to, to get uh, engaged. I want you to get interested. I want you to get infuriated. I want you to get happy. I want you to get mad. I want you to, to have all those emotions come out as we welcome my special guest onto the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome GK Ganesan Apakaba, brother, my, my friend, my learned uh, colleague. I'm not even a colleague of yours. I don't even know why I said that. I've just been watching too much LA Law. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Good evening. Okay, you, you see how calm he is? You see, this this is a lawyer. Orang tengah menjerit on one side, dia pun, I'm calm, thank you very much. Re relax. Re that is so relax. Mr. Mr. Do I call you GK? Do I call you Kanesan? Yes. Do I call you yes. What do I call you? Please call me GK. GK, uh, can you take a minute, can you take 45 seconds to a minute to just uh, let the people know who you are, what your qualifications are, just so they get a point of view if they don't know you already. And by the way, I want, I want you to know, I got so many messages of people who are like, yes, you're getting GK on the show. This guy knows, knows what he's talking about. But there are many out there who may not know where you come from. So please, just take that minute to introduce yourself. Uh May I please uh, introduce my master? I am the husband of Mala Mageshwari Kupusami, and today I speak with her permission. <laughs> and I am from Trumbad, from a Tamil school. My father was Mr. Kasinathan. He was a goldsmith. My mother is Tangama, and I went to a Tamil school. I did Tamil up to Form 5. Then I went to, a, they call them remove classes. You know, they sort of remove you from the school. <laughs> at the age of 12, and they put you in one remove class. They actually call it remove class. You know, damn. Did they? Really? Remove Satu A or something. Anyway, I'm and there. They, I got there for four years, and then uh, I got through my LCE. Then went to Royal Military College. Went there. Oh, kampung kan kita dapat kampung kita tengok sana semua semua panen pandai semua belak. Went there to RMC Colonel Anya. Then became an officer in the armed forces. Left, uh, and then uh, did a degree in nuclear science. Left, and then went and did um, law in England. Worked in. Um, all the different places as waiter, the Itula, Inila, McDonald's. I was uh, getting a price for making the best McDonald's. So today in Malaysia, I'm making the law McDonald's. Lah. Itu aja lah. You told me one minute, finish. Lah. <laughs> okay, so GK, what gives you, uh, and, and I want you to boast about yourself just for a moment. What gives you uh, the, the the gravitas, the right, uh, the why did I call you and, and believe that you you know what you're talking about? So let's. I, I heard about your past class remove, uh, Buddha Bodo. I get I get all that. You worked in McDonald's, but right now this we are going to jump into the matter of the constitution and law. In that matter, why why you who who are you actually? Who That's, we we want to know. I, I'm just an ordinary lawyer, like twenty two other twenty two thousand other lawyers. But on the, on the, I think it was, was it the 15th of May of 2018 that we had the election or 5th of May? I can't remember. Uh, 9th of May, if I'm not mistaken. May yeah, 9th. 9th, of May, 9th. Okay. So on the 9th, the results were coming out. And one of my friends wrote back and said, you know, this election officer is refusing to release the, the results to me because of this. So I had an election act in me, with me. I said, ask him to look at this form, ask him to look at that section, ask him to look at this regulation and tell him if he bloody doesn't release it, we'll go out and get an order against him. And they released it. So the whole night I was getting SMS after SMS from friends everywhere, from PAS, from Barisan, from PKR, from DAP. I was just sending them, not taking sides. And then, um, of course, the results were announced. And then my wife came and told me, I've been telling you for 28 years to write, write, write. When you become a lawyer, you forget how to write. You, you only learn how to be precise. 
you you learn to be exceedingly precise and you become so precise nak cakap dalam 10 perkataan you cakap 10000 perkataan orang <laughs> dengar pun tak faham so what happens is uh, i i used to write fiction and all that i used to you know, i'm a tamil school student we read a lot of tamil stuff is very artistic so i used to write english fiction i wrote many many stories in english uh, nobody wanted to read it i threw it all away and then i stopped writing from 1993 up to 2018 and my wife kept telling me write 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 and then i started a blog called paradox so i started writing oh, tommy thomas tidak boleh menjadi ag kerana dia bukan melayu so then i studied the constitution and said no you, you can actually do it and in fact the ag cannot advise the king on islamic law because there is a particular person who does it a constitution actually says that so then did that 250 essays later and uh, one morning my wife says hey why don't you do video on your damn boring la on video i tell you 1800 who is going to read you up so okay so my wife is you know very precise so i started doing video it was horrible 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 but eventually after 130 videos people listen to us and uh, i want to take a neutral stand i don't want to say in favor of you know whenever i bantai the government ah 30000 15000 25000 when i don't bantai the government and i say if i'm no pulls out of pakatan perikatan nasional or whatever was going to happen i'm going to say nothing is going to happen nobody wants to read it 700 <laughs> so people want you to write something controversial i won't do it because i will only write what is i think is correct okay so i uh, i want to tell people right now that uh 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 because um a lot of people say to me oh you dah kena bayar you you get this gas because of that death and i i remember this conversation i had with you yesterday that you were very clear that um tonight you're just going to be talking about facts talking about law from 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 your perspective about yeah, yeah. you know so uh at the end of the day you you said one statement to me which really struck me you said actually law is a jigsaw puzzle yeah now uh Most people believe that uh, law is either right or wrong, uh, left or right, black or white. Tapi the way you explained it was law is a jigsaw puzzle where there is not one. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There is not one interpretation, but you need to put together the different. Uh, upper, I don't know what level. Acta 3.0 brackets B C plus, and then take into consideration 149150151. Go back to 163 and put that all together before you can come to a, a a judgment or a ruling or a decision or a or or, or an opinion. I I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, that's for tonight. I hope that we are able to spend some time to just shed some light onto what happened. In the parliament, let's jump straight into it. Uh, I think by now people know. Okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. Smalam, uh, chronologically, I've already explained it at the beginning. Uh, actually, uh, if I'm to be a lay person, uh, what happened actually uh, yesterday? What happened? Aku pun tak tahu lah. Ini <laughs> bukan. You know, you know, uh, do you know what they call a group of baboons? Uh? A parliament okay. of baboons. So the- when I looked at it, people hurling abuse at each other. You know, I. Somebody in our in our family passed away three days ago, four days ago. I'm he had a problem. he had a problem. We we took him to the hospital. He was uh, admitted. Something happened, and he, at the point of death, they said he was COVID positive. And so we didn't know what was the cause of it. Did somebody visit him? Did he bring food? And then another person in another place uh, in Klang Valley also was very ill. And when we were trying to speak to doctors there, we couldn't speak to doctors. They were busy. And one of our friends called me, told me, "Do you know, ah, uh, how many of these doctors are uh, haven't slept for days? Ah, uh, these nurses, tak makan, tak la kencing pun tahan. You know why? They're afraid people are going to die. One, all, one, all these nurses. Sometimes they'll tell them night, night duty, go back. Uh, if you work all night, you can tido all day next day. Tapi ada datang kerja, you come the other day. Tak mau pergi, tak mau balik." Duduk sana juga. Tidur tiga jam, lepas tu kerja. You know how much our nurses and doctors and hospital staff are dying for us. How many doctors have died? And here we are yelling at each other in parliament. I was looking there. I told my wife, I know now why I never... You know, when you were talking to Mahathir, you said, tak payahlah, tak payah jadi 
ahli politik lah. You know, you remember he said that. So I looked at it and realized, ah, this is why I will never be a politician. Because in that three days that they were talking or two days, and nobody said, ah, how many people died? Are they suffering? Are they having enough money? Are they getting rice, oil, food, sugar? How many places are, are there white flags? Nobody was speaking about that. Undang lah, itu lah, ini lah, speaker lah, entah speaker lah, macam macam. So I was thinking, what's wrong with this country? Ya? What is wrong with us? And where have we gone? Have we lost it? Uh? Have we lost it? You know why the king is mad? Uh? Imagine if you're the king. Uh, you're sitting there and you're giving orders to these guys. Uh, go uh, and please call parliament into session. Uh, and these guys are just messing with the four days. So I wanted to show everybody it was a farce. So when I was thinking about a farce, I wanted to speak about an event which was a real farce. And then I remembered the boxing match between Inoki and Muhammad Ali. Inoki mm -hmm. didn't come with gloves. He just came with bare hands and he was lying on the ground. 15 rounds. And they all went back. The whole idea was to make money. So it's a farce. I tell you, it's a farce because they were not interested in the people. They were not interested in how many of our doctors are suffering. They were not interested in the sacrificial duty of our policemen. You know why you go there, you put a policeman in the roadblock. Huh? He says, Tuan Pogimana, you book up the think up, you know. You know, you're breathing onto his face. You know, how many thousand people this you know, this this gentleman who's a policeman having to, you know, having to check you la itu la ini la, and they're constantly having to arrest these people or that people. Huh? We are putting our frontliners into the path of death, huh? and we dare come to parliament huh? and talk about this section and that section and this and the other. I'm disappointed with a lot of you. I'm disappointed. It's better the speaker doesn't open his mouth. You know why I was in the armed forces for so many years. People die for the country, you know. We've got soldiers who are being given jabs, huh? air jabs, you know. That oh, but our soldiers. These are guys who have given up their life for you, you know. I was a captain once, you know. I sayang my men. You see, huh? We really have to take a, get a hold of ourselves, and now, right now, we have to go right behind the king and support him. You know, the king is trying so hard. All right. Ah, 28th of uh, February, Mahadi resigned. They're yeah, fine. Okay. Mahidin comes and says, look, I've got the majority on that side. Anwar is saying something. On this side, Mahade is saying some, something. On the other side, Mahidin is saying something. So the king makes a decision. All right. I really am not sure. But between the three lots, I think this guy has got a majority. And then he says, look, we've got to get the budget passed, you know. Can you help us? He helps. And then he tells you, go and call parliament. And you don't call parliament. I'm not speaking as a lawyer now. Huh? I'm speaking as a very angry citizen. I'll probably be dead huh, in 5, 10, 15 years. Huh? But the way you guys are running this country, you're a disgrace, you know, I tell you. You are a disgrace. How many of you opened your mouth and said, huh? cakap lah pasal derita manusia. Cakap lah pasal pacik-pacik yang macik-macik dekat kota baru lah. Dekat kola pila lah. Sana lah, sini lah yang tak ada duit, tak ada makan, tak pekerja kerja, berkurung di rumah macam anjing dan macam binatang kena duduk. Other countries sit down in a country for two weeks, then the leaders figure out how to fight. Ah, do you know what was the numbers when we were fighting? When we on the day that the emergency was announced, the numbers were very very small. The numbers were very very small. All right, the the you know the the king said, oh. Um, the king states that 15 hospitals had exceeded 70% of their capacity. This you will find in the proclamation letter, the letter explaining the proclamation. In the Klang Valley, the Kuala Lumpur General Hospital and University Hospital have reached 100% saturation. Some ICU units in Sungai Bulo have reached 83% saturation. The usage, usage rates for beds in ICU for COVID-19 patients inflicted in Para, Selangor, Melaka, Terengganu, Sarawak had exceeded 70%. Therefore, the king granted permission you know, for this entire thing to be done. But at the date that he gave his order, the numbers were very, very, very small. Now the numbers are humongously large and you had your emergency and you haven't succeeded in bringing it down. So did the emergency succeed? Forget about the constitution. Forget about the law. Forget about the lawyers. Forget about parliament. Did you save your people? Can you look at me in my face and tell me I did? If you say to me, I tried my best. I'm prepared to listen to you. But you didn't try your best. So that's why I'm 
angry and I'm writing. But when I'm writing Harris, I don't try to attack anybody. I just talk about the law and stop. I'm sorry, I'm ranting, but I'm upset. Uh, I, I, I have a little bit of uh, background uh, information about why you are upset. Uh, you had a close member of your family uh, pass away recently. Yeah. Uh, because of this, this, uh, are you willing to share a little bit about that? Who? who yeah, I, I've got an uh, uncle. My mother's youngest brother calls Mr. Sivam, Mr. Sada Sivam. He's a mechanical engineer. He's a MacGyver of the family, you know. So I said, listen, Mama, I'm having problems with this transcriber. You know, I, I don't know how to read. I put the computer in front of me, my face, this side, no, Kusana, Kusini, Macha Macha, you know. So he went and he designed a transcriber with which he put an iPad inside and he did it for 125 ringgit. I ordered it in Amazon, about 1,200 ringgit. He did it for 127 ringgit. He put it on one of my tripods and I have done 130 videos with it. Then he told me, what are you having? What's your problem? I said, my problem is with lighting. So he took a metal plate, he brushed it, you know, with metal brushes and he shines the light. And by changing the, the how coarse it is or how smooth it is, he can control the softness of the light falling on my face, you know. So he was a guy who was really interested in solving a problem. I like to have pyramids in the house. He constructed the pyramids. Every railing in my house, every staircase, I see his face. And today he's not with me. And when I see him and I think about him, I get angry. Yeah. All the law I know, all the influence I have couldn't save him. So it's very frustrating. This is why I'm frustrated. And may, may my uncle soul rest in peace. Um, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, what is today will be, Laris. <clears throat> what will be, will you know, be. God bless. Now I understand your anger. Now I understand your... Uh, you, you you said you're going to stick to the law, but you've opened up with a rant, and God bless you for, for that little rant. Um, my wife, you saw her, head, her hand coming just now, and she's asking me why I'm crying. Only because it's like, this is real. This is... Yeah. And this 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 uh, pandemic does not does not discriminate. It does not it does not discriminate whether you are a, a, a tansri or a pauper. Yeah. It's across the board. If you are affected, you're affected. And the worst but part you is know, this government. This government made a distinction between a tansri and a datu. They passed a regulation which says that those ministers who go overseas and come back, they only have to quarantine themselves for three days. So long as they're not a danger to the public. So long as they're not a danger to the public. So the COVID-19 can recognize, you know, ini Datuk. Ini Datuk Sri. Ini Menteri. Ini bukan Menteri. Ini, <laughs> ini bagaimana? I'm, I'm going to challenge you on that. I'm going to challenge yeah. you on that. What are you yeah. basing? I, I want to, <laughs> I'm not a lawyer, but when you make a statement like that, people are going to attack you. Uh, yeah. Is this is a is this a statement of opinion or is it a statement? No, no. Of there is a there's a law passed. I'm trying to look for you to get you the exact citation. I never say things without proof. Uh, <laughs> I, that's they, why that's why I'm a little bit surprised you said that. You're uh, saying they, they that had a, they had an emergency. Uh, they they had an amendment. Uh, see that? Oh, okay. C can you read it for us? And you've shown it. This is okay. a little bit than what, what uh, Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act. Okay. All right, signed by Dr. Sri Dr. Adaham Baba Wamota, and it's dated the 2nd of February 2021. It says, subject to paragraph 3, the minister exempts the cabinet ministers who return from any overseas official visit from the application of section 15, which requires quarantining. The cabinet ministers who return from any overseas official visit shall undergo observation for three days or undergo surveillance until to be discharged without danger to the public. Can you see that? Uh, we can't see it. I'm taking you. I'm taking your word that you're reading it to us verbatim. Yeah, it's there. So when I saw that, I got mad. Wait, wait, hold, hold on. Well, take one step. One step. One step. What hmm. you're reading to us is is what what document is that? Because I just you want see, to clarify. They, yeah. Can I can clarify that when they pass the essential uh, emergency within bracket essential powers uh, ordinance 2021. They then went and amended certain parts of other statutes. There is a statute called PCDA, Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act. So under that particular act, the Minister of Health can from time to time change regulations and amend the law. And this guy, Dr. Dato Sri, Dr. Adaham bin Baba, on the 2nd of February 2021, passed a law that says ministers who return from overseas 
are only to be quarantined for three days or shall undergo observation for three days or surveillance without danger to the public. So I was asking myself, every Tom, Dick and Harry gets to be quarantined for X number of days. Why is this limitation? Where did this come from? What was the strange logic behind this? So this became uh, uh, basically a, a yardstick by which the government measured itself against other people's laws. When it comes to other people, enforce the law. If you go and have a durian feast in some place, you don't have to worry about it. Oh, I forgot about it. It was last month, you know, it didn't happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually I was there. I'm sorry, you know. So people are watching and you know what's happening? People are boiling. I'm telling you, people are boiling. We being Malaysians, we won't go and bitch about it. We'll keep quiet. We are that tongue like election. Kita buat apa yang kena buat. So I am telling you guys, the country is boiling because not because people are complaining about sitting in the house. When you coop up a group of people in a house without any work, people get frustrated. Tens. Number of suicides, has it gone up in the last six months? You tell me. Um, I, I have a problem. Uh, my driver came to see me on the 4th, on the 3rd. He said, sir, good evening. And he went away on the 5th, he was dead. Because he Sorry. went out somewhere. On the 5th, he was dead of COVID. He went out, he met someone, um, somewhere he went accidentally, uh, contracted it, and he had a problem and he passed away. So I had two people who died within days of each other. One was on the 5th, another one was on the 26th. And uh, we now have one person still in the hospital who's, by the way, being brilliantly looked after by our doctors and nurses in GHK. I tell you, uh, none of us understand the trouble and these doctors go to, you know, our nurses go to, I think we must take a moment to appreciate them. They're wonderful people. I, 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 I don't want to say that I'm taking your word for it because I know that for a fact, but you are absolutely correct. Um, this is the story you shared earlier about doctors and nurses not wanting to leave their station or not wanting to go back and sleep the 12 hours or the eight hours that they're meant to only because they don't want to wake up and someone who under their care has passed away. And yeah. if you are a doctor or a nurse and you have committed your life to the care of someone, I, I believe it's in their doctor's con and nurse's constitution or staff, anyone in, in the hospital, hospital staff. So I mm. think, uh, thank, thank you for... for, for um, I, I beg your pardon for being so cross. Yeah, I beg your pardon. No, no, please. No. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a politician. I can't uh, double talk. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know whether your number one, the boss uh, behind you is now uh, pulling her hair out. <laughs> probably scolding me. She's telling, don't say all this, be quiet. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say this to you. My, my wife is the same right now. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, over, she's over there. She's over. <laughs> uh, guys, um, you know what? This is, this, is, this is what I love about these kind of conversations and what I love about you, GK, is that we may have had a plan about what we're going to talk about, but um, we've, we've, we've gone off tangent and I absolutely... I'm sorry, I'll come back to the plan. No, no, no. no. Let's, 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 keep on, let's keep on going. Okay, we've taken that, uh, I don't know what has been, 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes uh, to, to on that tangent. You know what? Uh, so, <laughs> as I started at the topic, um, yeah, you're right. Now, now that you talk about the, the, human, the human cost of what has been happening in the parliament, uh, it almost seems irrelevant that we are now going to, uh, for me to ask you actually what happened in the parliament because uh, a lot of people are a little bit confused. Uh, the 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 Istana Negara released a statement saying, and I'm going to use layman terms here, oh, uh, actually the PMO tak cakap sebenarnya, I didn't know they were going to do this. And then the PMO releases a statement saying, oh, actually we told you, uh, who said we didn't tell you? Uh, and so, uh, putting that all that aside, can we just spend yeah. a few minutes talking about? Yeah, I, I don't say without emotion. Can we talk about facts uh, as you know it, and and the jigsaw puzzle you were talking about? Could you explain in layman's terms what happened yesterday and what the actual issue was? We start with the proclamation made by the king. Okay, let's the do that. Said, king said, "I am proclaiming an emergency." Having proclaimed the emergency, he signed it. At the bottom of the signature, he says, 
dengan titah baginda Tan Sri Datuk Haji Mahidin bin Muhammad Yassin Perdana Menteri akan dibentangkan di parlimen menurut fasal 3 perkara 150 perlembagaan on the day the king expressed his opinion and he was satisfied that the conditions of 1503 emergency was satisfied he actually said bentangkan di hadapan parlimen this was when you know 11 14 11th of january 2000 2021 sorry Wait, hold, hold on a second so that document you're reading was 11th of january the beginning uh, of this yeah Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a proclamation of emergency and there itself his majesty the king says please put it before parliament under article 1503 whoever is advising the king is doing a very good job. So what happens What happened after that? What happened subsequent to that? They said, "Oh, we are now passing the emergency regulations. Parliament shall not be called." On the one hand the king is saying, "Please call parliament." On the other hand the Constitution itself says it must be laid before Parliament. Let's go back to 1920. All our Articles 150, this grandmother story everybody's telling us, <laughs> can be traced back to the 1920 English Emergency Act. And the English Emergency Act, almost the same words as ours, or rather the other way around. Ours is almost the same words as theirs, except that in the English Parliament it says, where Parliament is not in session, Her Majesty the Queen can give an order and proclaim orders as to emergency, but parliament shall meet in five days. Our great politicians took that five days out of that, but copied and put all the rest. Ini Malaysia ni macam ni punya perangan kita ni. Kita copy orang lain punya benda, benda wherever there is a safety net, wherever there is a safety line, we take out the safety line. You know why? We don't like safety lines. We want to control everybody. Okay. So that's why I'm saying to you, Whenever you interpret the law, there are many pieces. Some are constantly moving and you have to make sure that they all move in the same direction. And sometimes you have to contend with opposing factors. It's like putting a jigsaw puzzle. You may think that this looks like we will go there because it's got blue and red. And when you try to fit it, it won't fit. And then you realize, all right, there's a problem. And you find another blue color and red color and then it says it fits. So you have to do it in such a way that the pattern is the same all over. So up on a mountain means your jigsaw puzzle has to be like that. And you're down in the valley means the jigsaw puzzle. Somebody says, I want to go to Ahmad's house. And you say it's on the third bend in the river. So you go, you walk the river, you follow the river to the third bend. And then you go on the third bend, you go to Ahmad's house. You don't bring a JCB, dig the river until the water comes to the house and say, Inilah rumah Ahmad. This is damn silly. Okay? This is the example I'm giving you. So, kalau kita nak ke Johor Baru, kita ambil pergi bus, pergi dekat Kuantan macam mana? Nak pergi ke Johor Baru. Kita ambil bas tulis sana Kuantan. Siapa punya salah? Kuantan, Kuantan. Saya dah cakap Kuantan. Kuantan. Tapi cakap dari tadi nak pergi Johor Baru. Atau Alostar. Nak pergi Alostar, ambil pergi bas Johor Baru. One judge told me a joke. He said two fellas were on a train and they said what a great train company we have in the world. You know, I'm going to Johor Baru and you're going to Alostar and here we are on the same train. You're sleeping upstairs, I'm sleeping downstairs in the bunk. This is exactly how the law looks to me today. They took the law and they're playing games with it. You want to play hockey, you play hockey. Don't play rugby in the hockey pitch. <laughs> okay, given given that, given okay, so uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing you say is that there was some kind of uh, um, inverted commas, manipulation, uh, changing, adjustment of previous laws, uh, to suit current standards. Okay. Yeah, okay. Kita dah tahu this uh, without going into details and I'm sure one day we will go into details as a completely different show. But today, given, okay, Thursday, yesterday, um, can I ask something? So when, um, what, what was your take when, were you following Parliament yesterday? Were you following the... Uh, the moment by moment. I did for a little while. I did for a little while and then I became disgusted because I was so, going to, I was thinking maybe they're going to do it this way because that's the way it should be done. Because if you go and study the English, how to lay papers before parliament, there is a guideline. So I studied that guideline and said, okay, maybe the minister of law is going to do this. He went to the king and the cabinet went to the king and said, your majesty, there is an emergency. There are two problems. Number one, there's a whole load of flooding in certain parts of the country and people's lives are in danger. Second, 
there's this pandemic which is killing people right now we have 3033 people who are dead uh, 14141000 people who are infected and we have so many uh, people infection for today and 70% hospital beds are all taken up we don't think we can control this covid can we please ask your permission to have emergency okay as uh, let me just hold you for that moment this this uh, conversation this moment was when what month Be, this was i think uh, shortly before the 11th of they had tried it earlier and they failed before the king they tried it earlier i think a month or so earlier they tried it they failed and they went back i think probably 10th or 11th and they said can you please do this and then the king listening to them said all right i'm going to do this so the in order to convince the king they must tell him three things they had they have to tell him either something is already happening or something is going to happen so let's talk about things already happening so things that already happening are it must be a grave emergency grave means what what does the word grave means coffin you know you remember coffin it's a oh, grave right. danger right grave very serious danger about what three things number one grave emergency exists where the security of the federation or any part of the federation is threatened not the whole federation can be in slango can be melaka can be negeri sembilan the okay. security is threatened so what is our understanding of the word security so these english judges back in 1963 1950 when we used to go to privy council they will give you uh, the widest possible definition of security you know security doesn't actually mean a clash of arms you know they will tell you you don't have to have people fighting with each other or burning buses or acts of violence do not necessarily mean security threat to security but it can be security i think is all english double talk my understanding is security to the nation means somebody is attacking us lah some unknown country is attacking us okay security so i didn't think there was a security problem i thought there was a public health problem will come to the in a minute second there was a grave emergency that threatened economic life something happened our shares are going down nobody is buying our stuff our our you know our currency is plunging like in 93 94 you know remember uh, sorry 97 you know so i didn't find it so either a grave danger to the security b grave danger to the economic life or three grave danger to public order orang gado ah uh, people fighting with each other looting people shooting police fellas none of that happened so how did you convince the king kita akan sakit so the answer to that is there is an act in 1988 33 years ago we had exactly for this prevention and control of the infectious diseases act that says if you want to go and control somebody under this particular act you have to isolate them you have to surveil them surveillance you have to have them medicated you can shut down and uh, disinfect the buildings sekarang bagi tutup all the factories so Hold on, hold on. Sorry, are you yes. saying there was? Sorry, are you saying there was some act in eighty eight that was nineteen eighty eight for this? It's called a PCDA, PCIDA, PCDA, Prevention uh, and Control, PC, uh-huh. CI, Infectious Diseases Act, nineteen eighty eight. It sets out all the things that the Minister of Law must do. And you know what they were doing in the first week? We got Malaysia had a landfall of the virus with three infections, I believe, on the 25th of January. The the Ministry of Health was doing a good job. They went in, they isolated, they did all these things, they advised the cabinet, they took steps. Um, <clears throat> there was a guy called Zulkifli, I think he was the Minister of Health at that time. He did a good job, and um, the the Director General of Health was doing an excellent, outstanding job. Director General of Health was a de- decent Director General of Health for the first three months. Later on. You, you could see that he was slowly becoming less and less important somebody else was talking so the whole point was they had an act they didn't use it they used the emergency act my complaint is my humble opinion is the emergency didn't improve the covid situation okay so you went and told the agom on the 11th of january we got two problems covid problem and number 2 we've got a flooding problem So I was waiting on the first day of parliament somebody will get up and say dengan izin Mr Speaker kita ada masalah ini flooding dekat Kedah Kelantan jadi berapa-berapa orang mati apa yang kita telah buat tindakan-tindakan yang telah diambil jadi kedudukan tu kita tak dapat tahan jadi kita terpaksalah jadi kita jumpa so the first thing you do when you come to parliament is you prove to parliament a district one of three conditions existed they didn't do that 
Okay, can I ask you why, in your opinion? Why what? Why you, they didn't do it? Or? Why they didn't do it, yes. I don't know because I was thinking, these guys, there is a law. You went and invoked section 150. Section 150 says A, B, C. So you must go with A lah. First you must say, Jadi saya nak beritahu Dewan dan uh, yang berhormat, yang berhormat, kita nak beritahu Dewan bahawa kita ada dua jenis masalah. Yang pertama, floods. Yang kedua, COVID. Jadi umpamanya nombor-nombor yang meninggal sekian-sekian-sekian, flood sekian-sekian-sekian, we went there, we did this, we told His Majesty, the Majesty was, His Majesty was satisfied and His Majesty signed the proclamation on the 11th of January and His Majesty said, hello, would you please lay it before Parliament? That is a royal decree and it is in under Article 150 of the Constitution. It says lay it before Parliament. Why didn't you do it? So the Majest uh, His Majesty said this? It was yes, it's recorded. He's actually below. You see, whenever the King says call Parliament, call Parliament, the riot were never told, you know. I had to hunt down the proclamation because I was telling everybody in the office, you all are talking about proclamation, proclamation, proclamation. I have a letter from the, I have a letter from the uh, royal house. Uh, the keeper of the seals has basically spoken because the king never addresses people directly. You see, he has to address him, address yeah, through the keeper of the seals, and he has done it. And then he doesn't say anything else except the fact that His Majesty heard opinions. His Majesty listened. His Majesty was satisfied. His Majesty wants to execute the emergency, and His Majesty prays. His Majesty prays for the health and happiness of the nation and that we will go forward and we'll overcome this disease. This is a king who cares. And he says, and whoever is advising him says, please put it before parliament on the 11th of January. When did you come before parliament? 26th of July. What were you doing for six months? Uh. What were you doing for six months? Okay. Okay, now now we we are we are venturing into that that question leads to yeah we we, we, we cannot answer that question lah we we can yeah. speculate we can uh, we can uh, you know guess but we we cannot answer that question but that is a very good question let me let me I'm I'm sorry to do this let me jump forward to Monday uh, Monday was what Monday was the twenty the, in the Parliament Open what's what was the date twenty six twenty five twenty whatever Monday. When when uh, was the minister of law who announced that? Oh, by the way, uh, emergency. Kita we stopped it on twenty first of July, uh, mm. a week before. Um, mm. At that moment, because now mm. I'm trying, I'm trying to stick to the facts here. At yeah, that moment, yeah. that announcement is made, which led yeah. to the subsequent announcement on on Thursday that uh, Yang Di Pertuan Agung said, "No, oh, no, 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 whatever, it didn't happen." But at that moment, I mean. Can I just ask you from a personal opinion, when you heard this announcement, you who, someone who knows the law, someone who understands the constitution, what is running through your head? I thought I made a mistake. Really? Uh, I thought I made a mistake listening to this. I, I, I thought maybe I called my friends and said, you know, uh, did you hear the minister speaking? He said, yeah. Did he actually say that the cabinet revoked the emergency laws? Are you sure he said it? Because I'm a lawyer, I'm going to write about it. I get to get. He said, "Oh my God, yes, he did." So I thought I was crazy as well. The other guy also thought he was crazy because nobody in their right mind would have done what this guy did. Okay, so once you have this conversation with your friend, and then you you both uh, come to a, a sort of agreement that uh, what this announcement was made that they revoked it. Uh, can I ask, uh, and I, I'm, I think I'm going into speculation zone here, why only on Thursday did uh, uh, an official announcement come from uh, Yang Dipetuan Agong? When, when, if I'm not mistaken, Monday it was uh, when the announcement was made that, oh, it was revoked. And I'm sure you have explanations of difference between revoked and, and annulled, and etc. So why that? Okay, I'm asking as a layman here, and you don't have to answer uh, if, you, if there is no law speculating this. Why the three-day gap? You, you must understand, I am a lawyer who spends his entire time dealing with the federal constitution. 
Okay. Because I'm okay. writing, writing, writing. I'm constantly having this book next to me. I'm checking the law. I'm double checking. Uh, I'm reading this, reading that. So His Majesty the King is not legally trained. So he has to go and get his advisors and ask them to come forward and explain to him, is this true? Can this be done? I'm sure he did that. Do you think this is correct? Do, do you? I thought uh, I told these guys to put it before Parliament on the 11th of January. And do you remember I told them must have a meeting with Parliament? They said, OK, 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 we will decide on the first week of September. I said nothing doing. Have it again. And this is a king who's been saying, do it, do it, do it. And they just couldn't be bothered. They just kept quiet. So I thought, OK, there's an article 40 that says if a cabinet decides the king has to follow. Then I read about it, read about it, and I found a Privy Council case that says it is the king who can revoke. Then I said, no, I don't agree with this. I think this Privy Council decision is wrong. So I went back and looked at the law, and I came to the conclusion, and maybe I'm wrong, that there are two methods by which it could be revoked, A, by the king himself, or B, when it's put before parliament, then parliament can revoke. But since the thing is already before parliament on Monday morning, the revocation by cabinet doesn't arise. You get what I'm saying? Uh, On Monday, okay. we were before parliament. Sorry, so can you just explain again what you just said? Because I, I'm i going to be Bodo here. No, I didn't get what you were saying. There, there, are, there are a number of statutes, including the Interpretation Act, where a person makes a law, only he mm -hmm. can revoke it. Does it make sense to you? I make okay. the law. I have the authority Sorry. to make law A. Only I can revoke it. But suppose I die today and my assistant takes over as director general of this, then he assumes that official power. So the person sitting in the chair has the right to make the decision. So Te Cheng Po was a very old Privy Council case that said the king is the one who can revoke it. So there is a very high authority. Why did it fly past all these guys? Okay. Given that, I'm, and I'm Talking purely as a layman here, excuse me if, if, I, if I miss a whole lot of uh, factual points here. Uh, the PMO's response to that later on in the day of yesterday, um, can, you, can you explain their response? And, and I'm not asking you to take sides. Um, their response was, they, they, I'm talking layman here, they made some efforts or <laughs> appeared to that they said that they did, they did uh, put this before Yang Di and the, yes, the young and, and, yeah. and, and His Majesty the King then responds to it. And look at how he responds to it. I, You know, isn't it, what happens? There is a cabinet meeting, I believe, on the first or Wednesday or something or every month. And before mm -hmm. the cabinet meeting starts, the Prime Minister will actually take the papers, go and see the His Majesty the King and say, look, there's a cabinet meeting. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're going to make this. Decision. This has always been the way. Always. The Prime Minister before the cabinet meeting will go and say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Is it okay with you, Your Majesty? Right. He won't mess with you because he's not going to interfere in your administration. But but it's the it's our culture, you know, the adapt, you know, you we go adapt. We take it from the English people. So I think definitely the Prime Minister would have gone, definitely would have come back, and these guys make a decision. But what does the Agong say? I didn't know. Tidak berkenan. I didn't give permission. Berkenan means to give permission. And then he, he implies, he implies that he didn't know. And his language on that day was so surprising. There's a guy who wrote on it in internet. I was laughing because I, I saw it. It, it basically um, showed that the king was really cross. And, and the king said certain things in a certain order. And may I please ask your permission to share with you that very, very yes. shortly. The no, king I, said, I rather, you base it on facts here. Yeah. Yeah. So the king used certain words to show a he wasn't told and he wasn't asked. So there is a there is a Privy Council case that says it is the king who revokes. So the king would have thought my advisors are telling me I'm the one who should revoke because I'm the guy who proclaimed it. And these guys are now saying they revoked it. All right, let's see what they have to say. And they said, oh, by the way, Article 40 says the king must act on the advice of the cabinet. It is there. It is there. When the cabinet goes and tells the king, please do it this way, the king has got three choices. Okay. He can accept, he cannot reject, he can accept, he can ask for further information, or he can advise. My friend T. Gunnar Sealand spoke to me today. We were discussing it at great length. He said he can advise, meaning, all right, guys, you guys really want to do this? What about this? 
What about that possibility? Could be, you know, Rayat are uh, very, you know, they're in a great, terrible situation. Do you think we could approach it this way? How, how do you feel about that? So I suppose there is an ongoing discussion. And then the prime minister will say, yeah, I think I'll withhold it for two days. I'll come back to your majesty in two days and we'll talk again. I suppose this is how, how it happened. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. Okay. I'm guessing. So this is what they maybe have said. But the king actually, and the king never opens his mouth. And the king comes and says, nobody spoke to me. And he says, on the 24th of January, there was a virtual meeting between me and Mr. X and Mr. Y from the government. He actually says it. There was a virtual meeting between me and Mr. X and Mr. Y of the government. Mr. X was the Honorable Minister of Law. And he said he had no inkling. Now, if the cabinet is right, they made up their mind. They already revoked it and then they informed the king, is it? Because the king says, I wasn't informed and I didn't give permission. That means on the 24th, three days later after they revoked, we have a doubt whether the king even knew. That's when on the 26th, the king listens to it. And then some days later, he probably called his legal advisors and said, guys, we've got a situation here. What do you think I should write? Probably somebody said, I think you have to make yourself very clear. Uh, that you never gave these instructions and rightfully the king went forward and uh, he did that and and we really appreciate it it took it took a lot of courage i tell you i tell you for a king who doesn't interfere it took a lot of courage i appreciate it okay i'm going to ask what may sound like a pretty stupid question please do. why would on monday the minister of law uh, announce oh uh, yeah dr satori bulan kita dah revoke dah what what was that was my question. What's the, what's the intention of saying, oh, yeah, do, guys, five days ago, it was over. Don't worry yeah. about it. So, what I is that? think Muslihat dia ni senang aja. Muslihat macam ni. Saya dah cancel tau. Itu undang yang saya buat. Nak bincang ni apa, apa pasal? Nak bentang boleh bentang. Tapi nak bincang, nak dapatkan kebenaran, nak nak apa, nak nak enal, tak payahlah. Ha, the minister use one word. It's academic. It's academic. So that sounded to me like a magistrate court argument, you know. <laughs> you can't send, uh, you know, you can't send horses to, you know what you mean, to certain kinds of races. The point is, the way this guy said it was, we made the law, we cancelled it. Why the bloody hell do we have to explain it to you? Shut your face up. That made me mad. If he said, look, we did it, we took advice. And under Article 40, we think this is what we can do. And we cancelled it because of this reason, this reason, this reason. The number of cases had fallen from um, 3,000 or 30,000 or 40,000 to 15,000. And we now thought it was safe. And therefore, we made a decision. Instead of troubling the house, we did that. I may have bought it, although I wouldn't have accepted the, the cancellation. But the reasoning was he was arguing. He wasn't explaining. You see, huh? Haris, suppose you had a uh, Indonesian maid in your house and she's like a member of your family. She's supposed to cook and all that. She stays most of the time in the kitchen. You don't disturb her. And one day she comes and tells you, you cannot sleep in the room, you know. You go and sleep in the kitchen. And then uh, you clean the bathroom and you do what I tell you. So the house, the master of the house is like the parliament. The maid is like the cabinet. And one of the articles in the constitution says, the cabinet is responsible to parliament. So you can jangan lawan toke. But this guy came to Toke's house and said, Academic, huh? you suruh saya bikin nasi, encik Aris, huh? saya tak mau bikin nasi, saya buat bubur. You nak cakap, cakap lah. Dah buat, makan je. You get what I'm saying? I don't think I can make it any simpler. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I just saw a comment come out uh, saying that uh, Harith Iskandar looks like he has a headache. Yes, I do have a headache. I don't think not, you're having a headache. I think you're exasperated. Not, no, not because... Can I have not, a drink, Harith? Can I have a drink, Harith? Please, go go ahead. Uh, uh, I, I myself am having a drink. I'm going to... Of the door, yeah. coffee right here. Yeah. You know, You know why I'm exasperated and headache? And I go back to your statement at the beginning of the show. Now, anybody who's watching, if you just, I'm noticing the numbers have shot up since you've started talking in the middle of the show. I go back to the moment when we first started talking where I asked you about the Constitution and you launched into the, 
the human side of nobody on the first day brought up, hey, here are the amount of people working, here are the amount of people dying, here is the, the forget the economics and forget the law and forget the forget the you know the constitution and forget the whatever here are here are how the riot is suffering what are you doing what is happening here and and that's why when for the last 20 30 minutes we have been talking about the constitution but i'm sorry at the back of my mind i've been thinking now i understand your exasperation the, the first three days of parliament and i'm not putting any blame on one party either no, no. The opposition yeah at the end of the day the rakyat have been in those three days continue to suffer and most who are suffering are not vocal are not um you know are not able to go what the hell are you guys arguing about over four days they're very you, busy burying the dead harris yeah you're right you're right i've seen uh, i i can't verify but i've seen the videos Sometimes i see outside my house there's a guy who walks back and forth I often think how much money he's got in his pocket, you know. He probably has got $50 or something. He's got to go and buy some food for his wife, his children. I don't know how many children are there suffering. I'm sitting in this house behind these locked gates. I sometimes wonder. I used to be like, I was from a Tamil school. I used to be like this when I was a little boy. No rice to eat. I could see that. I'll tell my wife, you know, uh, shall we go and give this fellow something? My brother told you, you go there, you'll get infected. Lapa. You just sit here. You want to put the money there and you run away, you know. But the guys won't take it. They've got pride. They're going to go to work. And they don't understand why they have to be locked. So you said to the king, flooded, danger. Second World War, Hitler invades Poland. Churchill rises and addresses the House of Commons and he says, I promise you nothing but blood, sweat and tears. You know, Emergency. He's talking, I promise you nothing but blood, sweat and tears. And then every time he went to parliament, he said the war was going on. Fellows were getting bombed. At one point, Westminster was bombed and all the buildings were blown to smithereens during the bombing. They were still meeting, not hiding under the carpet like our government. They were meeting and they were finding ways. And they say so many people died. They were having problems in Ardennes. We're having problems in France. We're having problems in Africa. The Africa core is being uh, ha uh, you know, hammered by uh, this person. Montgomery is there. So many people are dying. We need supplies. We need sugar. We need aluminum. I didn't hear any of that. Because you know something? The number of people who died in Vietnam War, 52,000. The number of people who died in the United States of COVID, 645,000. The number of people who are dying of COVID are very many. More people are dying today in Malaysia than during the Second World War. Has it occurred to you? So I was thinking these idiots will go there and say, all right, kita ada banyak masalah. Yang banyak tu kita tak boleh selesaikan kerana benda tu terlalu besar. Jadi kita buat ini. Kita buat itu. Kita ambil muslihat ni. Kita ambil muslihat itu. I would have been happy. I would have listened to him. I say, okay, this guy is trying his best. Cannot blame him. You know, it's a tiny creature. You know, um, these are the problems. No, they were more interested in discussing who's going to be deputy prime minister, who's going to be this. So I'm going to stop. Next question. You may stop, but at the moment, uh, in, inside me, I feel like I feel like ranting myself. Please, uh, I I uh, I have an NGO called the Whole Branch, uh, okay. and uh, forget the thousands of stories. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about one story. There's a gentleman that we've met uh, a uh, about a month ago who was living in his car uh, for a month. He was living in his car for a month. Uh, and this gentleman is a businessman. He is not. Uh, he's not. Oh, my last I don't know. He's a businessman who, prior to this, uh, ran a. Uh, uh, I would say just under one million dollar business, which he threw all his money into. When we met him, I'll just give you the facts. These are just the facts. He's living in his car for a month. He has a twelve-year-old son who he has put into. Not not even a house that he knows. He a friend of a friend's house. He's, he's taken his son. He's put into his, his place. Only because he does not want his son to know he's living in a car and he doesn't want his son living in a car, sleeping in his car, which yeah. he hasn't paid for for eight months. So when we meet him and he's reached out to us through our, our, our helpline, we meet him and all he's, he's like on a daily basis, he just goes to markets and he's like, I just want to work. I want to get 20 ringgit to pay for my petrol. I just want to, and he's contemplated suicide. And the only reason he did not uh, kill himself is because he has a bit of EPF and he went to a lawyer because he's a smart man. And he's like, if I kill myself, can I get this money to my son? And his lawyer said to him, you give your money to the son who's 12 years old, he could potentially blow it within a week. 
Your son does not need your money. Your son needs your guidance. Your son needs your, your words, your help. You, he needs your guidance. So, so he didn't kill himself. Screw it. He didn't kill himself. And we, we've come, we've come into, across him. And this is not a, this is not a person who is, this is not a person who is, who has got nothing in his life. And he's only one. He's one. He's one. He's one person. Anyway, cut a long story short. I know he's not alone. I know there are thousands out there. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not blaming the government, please. Anybody out yeah. there think I'm blaming them? I'm not. I'm just saying this is a situation where you need people to come forward and you need people to say, stop bickering. Stop this parliament of baboons, uh, which is an English term. I'm not saying the parliament is made of baboons. You need to stop. You need to work together. You need to, you need to gather together. You need to work together. You need to get past this and later on you want to fight each other go ahead fight each other screw it but you know sorry i'm ranting i should be asking questions but i'm ranting this uh, i'm just you know it's like it's not you know, it's there's not, a malay proverb you know kita nampak orang pikul berat orang yang pikul lebih berat yeah. you know how many poor families are out there and these guys put up a flag uh, and somebody goes to help them Authorities try and stop them. Why? Let them eat, lah. They, you have no idea what their problem is. Okay, you okay, lah. You want to go and do politics, lah. You want to become minister, baik lah, buat lah, suka hati lah. But look after the rakyat. This is what the Agong is very angry about. And look, I tell you, I've been watching this particular gentleman from Pahang. He's when he was a prince. Uh, I used to be in the armed forces. Sometimes when I was in the air force. I used to go, I was a captain in the army. Sometimes he go there, he comes there. Very, very prama, you know, very outgoing. Um, he's, he's a guy who will never even behave like a royalty. He's like, like one of these guys from Johor, you know, very outgoing and all that. And this guy is saying, go to parliament, go to parliament, talk to them, put it before them. And he gives in his order dated the 11th of January, proclaim before, go and put it before parliament. No. Then on the 14th, he signs the essential, uh, the law, lah, emergency law. There also, he says, put it before parliament. They amended the essential regulations twice. In all, each of these, he says, put it before parliament. Then he comes out and has a meeting and said, you guys better meet. They ignore him. Again, he says, you guys better meet. They ignore him. And then he, he gets mad and he says, you do it or else. And then they do it. And what, what happens? They decided we're going to come there and we're going to tell a story a kindergarten story to everybody for four days. Suddenly got COVID. Dah lah virtual. Dah lah ambil. Dah lah plastik sana sini. Dah lah temperature. Tiba-tiba masa genting pula COVID. Anwar is rising and addressing parliament and saying, you know, Mr. Speaker, I've got this letter. No, I'm not allowing it because it could be, you know, not true. Give him a chance, love, for God's sake, to speak. This is the house of the people. If the people cannot speak there, who is to speak? Undor, Tari Bali, Bodo. I was thinking. I was, you know, I used to put on a uniform and go out. I told my wife one day, you know, my father is from India, you know. He fought for the British in the Indian National Army. And my father told me, you must fight against the oppressor. Then when I became army officer, my father told me, you must die for your country. In Tamil, you say, if you eat somebody's salt, you must die for them. He said, you were born here. You die here, he told me. This is your country. Don't go back there. So, okay. I told my dad, fine. I became an army officer. I served in the armed forces. And I used to tell my wife, you know, I'm, when I'm in the army, when I wear my uniform, go to work, I'll tell my wife, this is the greatest gift this country can give me, you know, to accept me as part of them, you know. you know. And, you know, those days, the army pips, huh? those days, huh? now no more, huh? it will have the Arabic writing, the holy writing, you know. It will be in praise of God. And I tell my wife every morning when I get up, I used to be a Hindu and then later I became a Christian. But when I put it on, I'll tell my wife, I became a Christian, then I became a Baha'i. Now I'm doing yoga. So I told my wife, you know how proud I am to wear this thing, uh, which is the emblem of the Federation uh, with the holy writings of Quran on my shoulder. It's like God sitting on my shoulder, you know. This is the kind of patriotism everybody has. Uh, yeah, lah, I'm educated, I can talk like this, lah. I'm a lawyer, lah. I go to university, I can temberang, whatever I like. But you know, there are people who cannot speak, you know. 
I had a dog who loved me so much. He doesn't speak to me. When he's in pain, he will moan. So human beings huh, who are in pain, they won't complain to you. Somehow they'll try to manage. They won't want to come. Malu lah kan? Segan kita nak minta orang. Kita duduk diam. So the law should help people in trouble. The law shouldn't be used to tie people's hands, tie the institution's hands, tie the king's hands. It shouldn't be used that way. The law should be used for making people happier, safer and healthier. So no point going to the best university in the world. If you cannot save the people, then you're not worth anything to this country. I, uh, you know, we, we, we could sit here and, and, and talk about this all night, but you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, what has been coming across my mind recently is when you're on your deathbed, and God forbid, I'm nowhere close near that, but no matter you know, how much wealth you accumulate, how much uh, uh, Bentleys and Rolls Royces and, and what, what not, when you go, uh, forget the moment before you go, when you go, the only people, the only things people will, will remember is what you have done for them, what you have, yeah. how you have touched them. Not, no one talks, who, who knows who the richest man in the world was who's now dead? Nobody knows who the richest man was who is now dead. Lah. You know who the richest man in the world is right now. You know, yeah. here, here are the Forbes list of 10 richest people. But you don't know the Forbes list of 10 richest people who have passed away. You don't know that. But you do remember people who have, who have touched you, who have contributed. And uh, I was just talking about a certain, uh, earlier this evening, I was talking about a certain individual who's passed away, who I, I realized no one mentioned this person, although he's very well known. And yet, uh, I don't know what I'm rambling about here, but at the end of the day, going back to what you just said, if you want to talk about law and 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 and, and constitutions and all, it is all about serving the people. It is all about, yeah. If you do not treat your people well, who who's what are you doing in this life? What are you doing in this in livelihood? I'm, I'm wow. I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm just going off on tangent here. Uh, I could sit here and speak to you about the intricacies of the law. Okay, I bring a BMW in front of you and tell you this BMW is beautiful. The BMW okay. left hand tire is 12 inches, the right hand tire is 18 inches, the back tire is 12 and a half inches. This is what our government is today. Our constitution is people have been messing with our constitution until it doesn't work. So those with a bit of brain should say, Tapa, we'll deal with it. I had a I had a commanding officer called Major Ghani at one point. He was uh, he was a CEO and he could tell dada tanya slayer, he'll tell me, no, what young betul? Kalau betul benda tu betul, buat. Kalau tak betul, and then he will tell me, no, semua pegawai mari sini, we'll go there. Nak minum, kita dah buat march 20 batu, kita punya soldier semua um, ni very tired. Korang ni jangan minum, duduk sini. Minta semua march sabun, march sabun, semua minum, makan dulu. Yang habis, yang lebih-lebih sikit-sikit, kita share dengan pegawai kita makan. We got flows all coming and saluting, spring salute. We all eating in the plastic lah. So Major Ghani taught me this. And when I left the brigade, Major Ghani took the first pip he got as a second lieutenant and he gave it to me and he gave his badge to me. He never looked at me as GK Ghani Sena. For him, he was I was his adjutant. And then there was another fellow called General Tarmizi who was a uh, dentist. General Tarmizi was a man colorblind. He loves his country. He protects his men like men. He will fight with his commanding officers, his, his general, or his two-star general, he'll put gado because his men must be looked after. You know what? Uh, where are these kind of people now? So there are good people in the army. There are good people in the judiciary. There are good people in the government. There are really good civil servants who are doing so much for the country. The politicians go and tie their hands. And all the good work our senior civil servants are doing is messed up in 10 minutes in parliament and then everybody says not so nice things about the government and then on this side the king is saying so so he being the king he cannot lose his temper in public he has to be very calm collected proper precise measured so he says things carefully um he will say things like i pray for the well-being of the prime minister i pray for his health but would you please like to consider these points Tidak ber, you know, we were not consulted. You know, tidak berkenan. He's being very nice to you. Don't go and pull the rug under his feet and disrespect him. Lah, for goodness sake. He protected you at, because he thought, okay, 
there's a big problem here during uh, the March the first. Okay, maybe I'll give these guys a chance. Run this country properly, please. And he gave you a chance. And then he tells you, you no. Know, okay, now the ship is going to the left. This is, you know, what? nobody spoke about the flood. Huh? Nobody spoke about how, how many people were dying. Huh? Talking about section la, forty la. According to forty, kalau cabinet cakap ke kiri, tongku ke kiri. Kalau cabinet cakap ke kanan, tongku. What do you think he is? Huh? He is a member of the royalty, you know. He has a right to ask you. The king has three duties. You know, uh, one of my friends was telling me today, there's a, there's a guy called Bag Baggy Hot who said he has a right to, to advise the cabinet. He has a right to consult the cabinet. He has a right to caution the cabinet. He has a right to advise the cabinet. He has a right to consult the cabinet. He has a right to warn, uh, to, to, to caution the cabinet. He has been doing this. And you come and say, uh, Tonku, 21 hari bulan kita sudah cancel itu undang-undang tahu ah is academic tak payah cakap saya hari Isnin saya akan buat satu undang-undang hari Selasa saya akan cancel dan hari Khamis tak payahlah kan academic tak payah cakap so this is what's happening we are becoming ridiculous and the rakyat are not stupid they are watching and it's not good. I, I really don't care who is the politician who wants to be prime minister. I want the rakyat to be taken care of. I want the people to be taken care of. Our soldiers are suffering. Our policemen are suffering. Our medical staff are being exposed every day. I need them all protected. We, you know, we need our shops to open, our factories to open. We are exporting 67% of all the gloves in the world, you know. And what did our great Miti minister do? Lock it. Kalau duit masuk negara ini, duit itu boleh digunakan untuk rakyat. Boleh beli ubat, boleh buat itu, boleh buat ini. Tak mau, tutup. You know why? Takut. Covid, mampus. Already dying what? What is there? After you guys took Covid, one cup what? What do you want to call it some more? So you okay. see all this uh, geram lah. I'm not talking like <laughs> a lawyer. I'm talking like a typical Indian estate boy. <laughs> so, Please. Maka the, I, I, I love the authenticity of that. Uh, I, I was I, my, looking at my mother's face the other day. I said, Amma, I'm pretty looking. Amma, how are you? You look at her face, you know, aren't you? Like, oh, this one is going to kill me. Huh? She said, you know, 84. You're going to kill me. Huh? I'm going to die. Huh? How? Huh? Your uncle just died, you know. You know, it's dangerous. I'm telling mom, don't worry. Everything all right. Go get Pfizer. Uh, eat well. Sleep well. You know, mother, are you okay? Uh, GK, are you okay? You're always working until 3 o'clock. Sleep well. You see how a mother thinks. This is how the prime minister must think about the country, like a mother. And that's not written in the constitution, for goodness sake. But that's how you should think about the country, like a mother. Look after the children. You have just uh, encapsulated uh, the entire problem in a, in a, in a uh, in a quote. You should look after the country as a mother looks after mm. the child. It's, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know where this, I don't know where to go from this conversation uh, further. Um, uh, I, I, I would just, I would just say one thing to you. As you are speaking, my, my late father was in the army, uh, Colonel Musa bin Muhammad. Yes. Uh, six, six regiment rangers. Yes. And. There was there was one common, uh, very insig insignificant comment on Facebook. Someone who criticized me for whatever I said and said, yeah. you know, Malayu this, Malayu that, and your late father would have been ashamed of you. And then, and I I re replied very casually. My late father was in the army when, and this was during the emergency of the seventies and eighties. He was in the jungles fighting the communists. I don't think my late father at any time said to myself, "Saya tengah melawan uh, insurgent ni atau komunis ni." Dan saya tengah fikir pasal Melayu. He was thinking of the country. He was thinking of the people. He never at one point thought, "I am going to shoot this communist or protect this uh, communist from attacking my people." But only the Malayus. A communist going going shoot the Chinese and Indians as well. You know, is and my late father father is not around to protect himself. My late father did he think this way? And you're in the army, and you you told me this exactly. No matter what your religion is, and no matter what your uh, the the paku was, what what language or what uh, syllabus was, in is you were you were fighting for one one nation, one 
one being, one higher being, uh, depending regardless of the name that you call it. Is it yeah. you know, God or Baha'i or, or, or whatever or what? yeah. you, were, you were fighting for? You protected your nation, your people. So it is ridiculous. It, it almost makes you want to say, if we could almost, before you become a politician, you go into the army or you go into the forces and, and, and you protect the country, then you learn to protect the country as, as your role as a politician. And I, I may be going too far uh, to say that. But I gotta, I'm just going to add one particular story. Uh, 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 the whole branch, which is NGO run, we have had members of uh, Angkatan, I, I will, I'll, I'll say it, bomber. We've had a bomber, a few bomber people approach us saying we need help. We need Saya uh, Mumulukan uh, Pertolongan. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so I help them out with a little bit of uh, assistance here from via the whole branch. But shh, it's crazy. This is bomber. These people... Are, are going out saving people from jumping off buildings and, 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 and snakes. Yes, of course, snakes and, and firing buildings. But they're coming because of the pride. They can't say, say, but he somehow reached out to me and said, don't please do not reveal who he was. But yeah, these are your angkatan, what's the word? Pertahanan. They mempertahankan this country against whatever, be it fires mm. or suicides or snakes. They mm. mempertahankan kita. And how come they've come to a point that they're reaching out to an NGO to support them? And I'm sure he's not the only one. He told me of, yeah. you know. So yeah, yeah uh, I, you know what? I <laughs> we've we've kind of veered off the topic, but I'm I'm glad we have. I had, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump across here. We've had a couple of people sending some video questions, and I want to. We may have answered these questions. I'm just going to play this question, GK. This is from a, a listener, a, a viewer of ours, and he sent in a, a video question. One of one of a few hundred that was sent. Let me just play this for you and see if. Hi, my name is Sukumaran from JB. My questions are: What is what is Article One Five Zero? Why were the MPs vocal about it in Parliament, and why did Istana Negara issue a statement reprimanding the minister? And the AG, in layman's terms, please, if you will. Thank you. Answer that if you like. Yeah, 150. 150 says you must put these laws. And there are two things that the Agong did. Please remember, His Majesty proclaimed the emergency. It's called a proclamation. Then His Majesty promulgated the laws. So there are two, two things. One, he proclaimed. The other is promulgated the laws. So both have to go promulgated the laws, emergency laws. So they have to be put before parliament and they have to be debated and you have to take a vote on it. And parliament can do three things. One, it can say we revoke it. Revoke means it was valid until now. From today onwards, it won't be valid. Yesterday it was all okay. Whatever you did, fine. You can revoke it. Or if the Senate and the Dewan Rakyat meet together, they upstairs, these guys downstairs, and they make a decision supporting that they must annul the proclamation, annul the laws. That means it, the proclamation was invalid from the word go. Because it's only the people who can see whether there really was an emergency, there was a threat to national security, threat to upper, the three things that I was telling you about, you remember? Security, economic life, public order. And parliament said, So they can just annul it. Annul means it's like the Agong never never, never made the proclamation. So our Minister of Law says, Aitu tapaya, kita sudah cancel. Did That's he revoke it or annul it? He said he revoked it. Therefore, the I, question of annulment is irrelevant, he said. So what he, he assumed, only the cabinet can revoke, but parliament can annul. It is not correct. It's only parliament that can annul, revoke. I told you three things can happen to the laws. The third thing is, by a passage of time, it will die a natural death by the 1st of February, six months from the last day of um, emergency, which is the 1st of August. So let me be clear. This is the reason why everybody was upset when he said, I have cancelled the order I've made, the laws I've made. No need to talk. You all shut up. That's why people got upset. That's the answer to the question. Next question, please. Okay, one more question. Good evening, Mr. Haris Iskandar and uh, Mr. G.K. Ganesan. My question is this. 
whatever done by our Prime Minister and Minister of Law with regards to the uh, revocation of the emergency ordinance, is it right or wrong? In simple words, if it is wrong, what are the punishments that can be given uh, from the law point of view? Apakah hukuman yang boleh dikenakan terhadap mereka atas kesalahan ini dari segi undang-undang? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give you a very difficult answer because the answer is difficult. There is a difference between misunderstanding the law, there is a difference between misinterpreting the law, and there is a difference between distorting the law. This one, Gunasila and I had a chat. Gunasila is a, is a friend of mine who's very learned in the law. We are constantly talking about each other. So Gunasila said, you think there's a difference between misinterpretation and distortion, isn't it? I said, yeah. But I also said, Guna, there's also a thing is misunderstanding. Saya ingin, I think this law is to be interpreted this way. I honestly made a mistake. You can be excused. You know why? You honestly thought this is the way it's to be done. That's okay. So we don't have to punish the prime minister or whoever, whoever. But okay. if you take a law... Sorry, GK. Sorry, we just lost you for about 15 seconds there. Could you just repeat your last sentence? Yeah. If you misunderstand a law and you apply it wrongly, that's fine. Because, uh, you know, in, in Islam, they call it Nawaitu. You know, your intention wasn't bad. Okay. You you meant you meant to do the good thing, but you made it made a mistake. Okay. All right, so that's okay. Yeah. But if you misinterpret, that means you know you must go left, but you go right. That means you are not caring for the people. You are a trustee. You are like a mother. Instead of giving milk, you are giving something else. That's misinterpretation. Distortion is dishonesty. You take it, you twist it because you want to profit by it. That's even a bigger thing than misinterpretation. How to punish? Unfortunately, the law doesn't allow us to punish any of these people. The only way to punish them is to vote them out. La. But 62 years, have we been forgiving them? Tapa. Ini baik. Dulu, jahat. Sekarang baik. Sampai mampu lah. Gini. So, one fellow asked me in the question just now, what can we as citizens do about it? I tell you what you can do. You have no understanding of the power of your WhatsApp message. You all can get together and do one. I, I have a friend, his name is Opi Hashim. He told me, if all of you did one WhatsApp group of 246 people and put your MP inside there and tara him every day, he has to do something, you know. Then get a few other fellas and put that. This is Haris Iskandar's page. MP Haris Iskandar's page. Haris, you're useless. You're not doing this. You're not doing this. Do that. You as an individual must lobby. You must go out. You must write letters. You must engage. Never mind. Haris, do. GK, do. Kumaran, do. Munyandi, do. Mutusami, do. Achong, do. I'm very busy. It's okay. It's because we do that. You know, some of us, huh? have you seen some people when there's a fight in the street, straight away they'll run inside the house, close the windows and carry all the children, throw inside. Oh, keep quiet. This is what's happening. 62 years. You deserve it. You deserve it. Fellas like us, right and shout. Huh? One day my tires were slashed, you know. My wife came and told me, Pa, I don't want somebody knocking the door at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I told her this sentence. I have been in the army. Our police are good people. They won't bully me. You know why I don't attack them? And the special branch won't come after me. You know why? They know I love my country. If they come and they knock me, they'll say, Minta maaf, in chip, kutiga, kita datang, kena tangkap lah. Tangkap lah. Apa mau buat? You're not lying. You're saying the right thing. I'm sure Haris, you've had similar to it. Listen, you must be brave. You must get up. Mustn't break the law. Mustn't say unnecessary thing. Don't use four letter words about, uh, you know, some people use mo, you know, M O O against some. I think it's all wrong. Treat him with respect, treat him with honor, treat him with integrity and say, Tansri, my dean, we're having problems. Yeah, I'm a brother, can you please do something? But do, we are in a in a society where we have to be polite. But some of these fellas, the more polite you are, the more the fellas climb on your head. See, yang ini tak baik, itu tak baik. Right, keep writing, writing. Nobody will respond to you. Keep writing until the fellas sees got two tons of letters in front of his house. Huh? Then you say, you better do something. But because you don't do anything, because you expect your neighbor to do it, you expect the young people to do it. I'm not retired. I don't have to do. You all fight lah. I'm sorry. I have to be rude. I'm frustrated. Sorry, Aris. Next one. No, no. There's there, there's no next question, uh, GK. Only because uh, I 
I I feel the authenticity. I I feel the um, I feel. I also feel uh, the hope. Uh, um, you you're here. You are still in Malaysia. Uh, I'm sure you have reached a point of your career where you could very much uh, uplift yourself and live in uh, you know in Perth or uh, you know wherever. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but but you're still here because, and this is something that I I feel strongly as well. Um, no matter what, uh, no matter how it may look that, that our our ship is in bad shape and may be sinking, uh, I'm going to do whatever I can while I can to to fix it uh, before you know it ends up being the Titanic. And I have yeah. a few friends who believe we're on the Titanic. Uh, yeah. I, There's one the question, Harry. Somebody asked. I need to interrupt you. Yes, please. They asked me, what is your view about what Dato Sri Gopal Sri Ram said? Okay. So I'll tell you what Dato Sri Gopal Sri Ram said. Dato Sri Gopal Sri Ram said, because people are asking this question again and again, uh, there is a case, the government of the government of Klantan against the government of Federation yeah. of Malaya I'm, and the of Rama, in which they said, this, yeah. order, can you hear me? Am I yeah, I can hear you. I'm, I'm, okay. So, um, we don't need anybody's signature we don't need Twanku's signature the cabinet can give an order without the signature but that is not the question here is it the question is can the cabinet revoke a law so the law says if three ministers sign uh, you can make anything the law is that what he's saying i don't think that's what he's saying ah you write on law in your cabinet ah uh, we take three indian plus with white hair and white mustache three ministers and kill the bugger so must kill me lah. No, there are rules of law, there are ethical positions, there are constitutional uh, safeguards that we have to follow. So I do not think that Dato Sri Gopal Sri Ram said because the Twanku didn't sign, therefore you don't have to put it before Parliament. What Dato Sri said was, the king doesn't have to sign the order. It can be signed by three ministers in the cabinet. But that was a MA63 agreement dispute between Klantan and the federal government. That has nothing to do with an emergency. So I don't think I I, I, I beg to have a different view from Adato Srila, who was my chigu, you know, at one time, my master and my boss. I have a different view. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. The greatest respect. And here is, uh, on that point, I would like to, to point out, we are allowed to have uh, different opinions and we're allowed to uh, disagree with each other. And as long as dialogue is still open for interpretation, because uh, yeah. like you said early on from the very beginning, uh, it is a jigsaw puzzle. And there, there, could be, there could be more than one way to assemble this jigsaw puzzle. But right. put that all aside, at the end of the day, I, I'm with you. I'm on the same page as you. It's about the people. People make the country. Malaysia is a flag. Malaysia is a word. Malaysia is a nation. Malaysia is uh, two separate peninsulas of two, two separate lands. But what makes Malaysia Malaysia are its people. Yeah. Uh, into poverty, into into death. God forbid, into suicide. We are we are losing the asset of this country, and. Uh, yeah, we've been talking about years about the assets of the country leaving and all these, oh, if you're smart, you leave Malaysia and you go and work in America or New Zealand or Australia. You know, uh, we need to keep these assets here. We need to keep, uh, that's why I'm here. Uh, we need to keep as much as possible the good and the bad, but we need to keep uh, people here, especially the good, to be able to realign the ship if, if, if i may use that term and realign this nation such that you know it, we are on a better path i mean for, we were the tigers of asia in the 80s uh and uh, i i truly believe at the moment that you know we can get better uh the 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 vision is a bit, a bit blurry at the moment but i'm i'm still holding on to that hope uh, and with that, um, GK, I just want to say thank you so much. You have spent more time than you um, agreed uh, to spend. Uh, we've been going at this an hour and a half. Uh, thank you so much for, for sharing with us. Thank you so much uh, for, for being with us. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say before we, uh, we exit this uh, virtual um, world? 
Mala, uh, Mala prepared me for today's talk by giving me dinner early and sh shouting at me and telling me, go and stand outside there, get your computer ready, don't do anything last minute, don't waste time, you know, and I thank you for giving Mala and I the chance to appear in your show. I am deeply honoured, Harris, that uh, you took a small man like me, you, with the generosity of your heart to put me there. I thank you and I thank Kappa, lah. you know who's Kappa, I thank Kappa <laughs> and you, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, b before you go, I just got to say that when you talk about Mala, uh, it's, she sounds so much like my wife. Yeah. She complains yeah. at me that you don't prepare enough, you're not, you're not ready yeah. enough, and you're, you're making shit up. <laughs> 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 and she's always warning me, don't say anything that's going to cause us, cause me, cause me to end up in jail. <laughs> so Mala and my wife got to meet one day and exchange yeah, sure. notes. <laughs> but thank you so much and thank you everyone uh, for watching uh, i'm gonna uh, let you exit from the from from this um uh, room at the moment but before i go gk i just want to say it's been my absolute honor uh, you use the word orang kecil and that that's absolutely not true that you have been uh, an absolute revelation and uh, i got to say this has been one of my most enjoyable um sessions on what's going on in malaysia so thank you again sir thank, thank you, you. good night can i leave can i leave now yes <laughs> You may leave now and do your work. Uh, guys, oh my God. Uh, wow. Thank you so much to those of you who have been sticking with me. Uh, let me just, i got to have one thing very quickly. Uh, I've got to give away 100 ringgit worth of vouchers to the best review. And I just want to announce it very quickly. This is the best review on Twitter. Uh, uh, it's from R of underscore the V. He says, Dear H. Harry, thank you so much again for having the show. What's going on in Malaysia? Last night was a spectacular one. I enjoyed participating and learned from the show. It's a, it's a show that unites all of us and brings value vibes of being a true Malaysian or being a Malaysian. So, uh, yes, uh, I'm going to get in touch with you on Twitter. And we've got a hundred ringgit of dome vouchers to give away to the best review. And also to the two people who... Um, I shared the questions with just now. Uh, I The first guy was, I think, Kumaran, and the second guy, I think, was Sunil. We're going to be giving you as well 100 ringgit vouchers uh, from Dome for participating and for having your question being uh, featured on the show. If I may take just a couple of minutes to wrap up. Uh, I, to those of you who think any, any of this is scripted, memang tak ada, tak pernah. This is what my wife complains about. You don't think about questions. You don't think about how you're going to talk about. You don't write it down. Um, but it is what it is. And uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have not shared this Facebook post, YouTube channel, shame on you. Thank you very much, Adrian Wong. One of the best sessions. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Vivek Ambikali. Thank you, Joan Linda Harding. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching the show. Thank you, Siva Prakash Nair. Um, guys, yeah, we're going to wait till Monday to see what happens. But at the end of the day, my takeaway from this session is, especially if you, if you just joined this session towards the middle of the end, please go back to the beginning. Please replay the beginning and see what... Um, I would like to consider him my friend, Mr. Gopal G.K. Uh, Gunson had to say about uh, the frontliners, the doctors, the nurses, the hospital staff, everybody, uh, the technicians who are working in hospitals and what they are going through right now. Because at the end of the day, forget about constitution, forget about law, forget about what is uh, written, forget about politics, forget about race, forget about religion. At the end of the day, this is all about people and the people out there who are who are committed to saving other other people. And I'm not just saying Malaysians, but saving the lives of other people. Uh, please go back to the beginning of this program and see what uh, GK had to say about that. Other than that, if you've been watching, thank you for, sh for watching. Thank you for sharing. If you're watching this after the show, like if you're watching this tomorrow morning, uh, please continue to share and please continue to subscribe and I will try and get back and answer all your questions. Uh, it has been my absolute honor and pleasure to speak to uh, GK. Uh, I would like to call him a friend now. I have not met him yet and we hope to meet. I hope to meet all of you, all of you one day when uh, all of this is over and I do a live session of what's going on in Malaysia. I hope all of you get to come uh, and, and, and we get to meet each other and, and have a chat the way we've been having. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, my name is Harith Iskandar. Terima kasih kerana anda uh, 
berada bersama saya selama satu jam setengah ni dan juga dengan uh, guest saya GK Ganesan um, what can I say uh, after tonight I hope that you walk away saying to yourself what's going on Malaysia let's together create a better Malaysia for all of us to live the rest of our lives terima kasih assalamualaikum and good night from Harith Iskandar and a big thank you I just want to shout out thank you to my team at the side there I got a whole team of like wow so many two people I got two people it's my wife Dr Jasmine Lim and uh, my brother-in-law Anthony Lim so many people too many people thank you thank you thank you guys my wife tengah thing what, what are you doing Sam Abi Mala Abi Mala oh you go to Mala you going to <laughs> still watching guys still watching you know what some of you can sign off I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to This, this is special for you. This is special for you. If you're still watching, uh, put on the comment section. I'm going to I'm going to make a song up about the comments. And keep on scrolling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you David Dran Vijay. Good session. Vasavakin Chungalingam. Palani wants a 2 hour show. I got to give you what I give him. Adrian Young says thank you for bringing you change the show for all benefit of all Malaysia. Thank you Vinash Aso Godan. Thank you Vinash Aso Godan. I got the wrong chord there. Thank you. Okay. Uh and then you just we just bring up the call bring up the 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 comments and I'll uh, I'll make a song about that. Thank you, Roslina Salihuddin Din says you came to my company's dinner a long time ago. It was like five or six years ago. I met you at the airport. You oh Helen Nashtan says, What's going on, Malaysia? This is what's going on, God. Zirugnia says, What if a PM refuses to step down? Zirugnia, I'm wondering why you have a picture of a dog. Shami Salem says I should be PM. Shami Salem, don't you try and hog? RB26 says it's a, been a good session. Proton Alex Ng says, Mita Jamil, sorry, I'm not racist. <laughs> Thank you so much for a wonderful show, says Mutarisan. Thank you for watching, Mutarisan. Right. Raya and to Raya, let's race together. Hands to hand, says Amy Tan, I'm watching from Orlando. Great love. Wanazi says, Good night, Malaysia. Thank you from above. Thank you. Good night, everybody. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Follow, like, share, subscribe, and do all the rest. Good night. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. I'll see you guys soon. Good night.